let's take a look at it. So we have two types of setups. So the software that you'll be downloading here will have two types of setups. We have our retracement setup. This is our deep outer edge sling, slingshot. And then we have our momentum setup, which is our zone break momentum setup, where the yellow bar turns yellow when you're breaking out of ATR zone. So those are really the only two setups you really need to track during the day, you get your retracement set up, outer edge. I already went over the zone break momentum setup. We did a Friday video on both of them together. Let's take a look at the outer edge setup and what does it mean. So we know this zone, this our, our 54 zone has been tested for the last 30 years. We know that the zone is a very important zone, 54-38. So what we can do then is we should see price react off this level. So this indicator that we have for you guys, once this arrow prints at this low or at this high, your speaker will sound an audible alert. An audible alert, there's a possible setup coming up on an outer edge trade. We have a lot of them on the NASDAQ futures that come up during the day. There's quite a few. So you can change the outer edge zone that you want. 54 is a very critical level. If you want to catch more, you can lower the zone. Um, if you want to catch just the outer edge trade, you can increase the zone up to 54. You can even go all the way to 62% if you'd like to only catch a few outer zones. So yesterday, we've only had two outer zone trades. Right here, a few of you were talking in a room about them. You got to the outer zone, the arrow prints, the market moved potential here of 46 all the way up to the swing high of what 55, so almost 10 points there potential, and then 46 and three quarters to the high of 57, almost 10 points. So 20 point potential on both outer edge trades. The one this morning is happening right now is an outer edge. You can see over here on our chart, here's the outer edge and here's the breakdown we're looking for. We're looking for a breakdown of 23 and a half. The outer edge would be 37. If you want the strategy to activate the strategy short, you're going to have to have this outer edge at least close. By one candle outside the outer edge, as soon as it closes back inside, here you can see the closing basis. That's when the arrow is going to print. The audible alert will go off. This is a trade on the S&P right now. So the trade would be entry of 31 and a half that just happened. And the low has been 25 and a half so far. So six S&P point potential so far in this outer edge trade. You can use this through the strategy that we have to enter through the strategy which with the trailing ATR, which we're going to go over this Friday. We're going to go over some market replay on this during the week on these trades, on this trade, this trade, this trade, how you have a trailing ATR. And now this is the 12020 on the S&P. All right, so when these trades come up, there's one thing also that's going to activate when the strategy is turned on. And you can turn on the indicator too. There will be a yellow bar that highlights when it pulls in like this. It will look just like this. It will see a yellow bar on the outer edge when it's qualified. So that's how it's going to look. So not only are you going to get an error with an audible alert, I want to show you the reason I'm, I'm putting this around here. I want to show you what an M top or W bottom looks like on a smaller Renko when he's come up. But you get the little yellow box around the outer edge trade. 
that'll automatically come up for you. Just like the yellow uh, Rinko, a yellow bar turns yellow when we have a breakout trade. It's going to look like this. All right, so you get the arrow that fires when you reach an outer edge on any given market. That's a high probability turning point. It has a high probability of calling the swing low or swing high. Called the swing high here just now. Had two of them yesterday called the swing low and swing low. Your speakers will go off right when you close back inside of the outer edge. And that will activate a long. And this will activate a short. Okay. So the arrow will print right at that swing high or swing low. Now, these are the two that's happened so far the last two days. These are the three swings that's happened in the market. What you can do on this software you're getting on your computer, if you want to put a lower time frame beside it too, the outer edge is going to stay the same. But it's going to confirm possible M tops or W bottoms. Well, what that means is if I go to a 13 Rinko beside my 12020 Rinko, on some major tops and bottoms, you're going to see M tops and W bottoms. So this is a 13 Rinko. Let the software activate. You don't. You can trade smaller Rinko sizes to get smaller Rinko sizes to get better fills. So your 20 Rinko fill, the yellow is the bottom of the bar would have been here. So your 20 Rinko fill would be 91 a quarter. I mean, I'm sorry, 31 a quarter. And it's been as low as what? 23 and a quarter. So eight S&P points here. Where if you notice the big yellow box, that was a 20 Rinko size bar. It took all these candles or bars on the 13 to make up 120 bar, if that makes sense. So this is 120 Rinko bar. It took all these 13 bars to make up one. So you can tell when you come up this arrow when it fires, your film the 13 Rinko is going to be here, which is going to be 33 and a quarter on the strategy. So now you got a 33 and a quarter fill versus a 31 and a quarter fill. That's an eight tick difference. So you have an eight tick difference from selling the same zone off of a smaller Rinko bar. Now where that can help traders that are manually trading this is it can show you when an M top or W bottom is coming in. What that means, we had two of them yesterday. So here's my Rinko bar that was on the 20. This whole yellow was on the 20. But if you go down to 13, you can see that you had two arrows that printed two audible alerts because it's an M. I mean a W. There's your W bottom. So you can tell when the 20 Rinko's forming a uh, W and M tops are very pronounced bottoms and tops. A lot of traders love to trade them, just like the cup and handle trade that we do. Whoops. But you can tell. Here's, here's a W. I'll show you what an M looks like. There's your W formation. And those arrows help you out showing those before the takeoff on the S&P. So there's your W, right? So if I go back here and I look at the swing high, this is the 20 where the 20 formed. And there's your M top. Look like an M. So if you wanted to, if you're trading the whatever market you're trading, trading, you can see when these markets in top or W bottom off the 20 Rinko on the 13 Rinko. To give you confirmation of a major top, major bottom. Now there's two ways you can do this. The strategy will get you in right at 
So if you're trading the 120 20, here's your fill. Be the low here would be there. If you're trading the 113 13, the first green arrow, our red reversal bar inside would be there. So the difference in fill again is 4920 versus 4918, eight ticks again. So it just shows you there's an eight tick fill difference on the S&P, two points, trading a 13 Renko versus trading a 20 Renko. You have an eight tick difference or two points. Now, you got, if you're doing this, you have another shot at the S&P. If anybody knows how to trade end tops or W bottoms, the number one rule is traders are taught to short this low when it's broke. From the M, this swing low will be the breaking point, how everybody's taught in technical analysis to short that when it's broken. So be short right there. Ironically, the break of the M is where the 20 enters, and you're going to find this on a consistent basis. So technical analysis off this M top on 13 Rinko, you're supposed to be getting in at the break of that low of that M, that's exactly where the 20 enters on the strategy. But I wanted to show you this because you get a second shot at it on a retest. The beautiful thing about M tops and W bottoms, you get another shot at it on the S&P. What I would do if I were you, when an M top or W bottom forms, I would put in horizontal, horizontal line across. I would look for a retest short because those retest shorts, they are typically nice large runners. There's your second shot at the S&P short at this level. So you get a couple shots at the outer edge trades when you know what you're doing. You get the shot at it on the first move back inside of it on a 20 Renko or a 13 Renko, the same thing. First move back inside of it, air will print, audible alert will go off. If you see an M top form, you can put a horizontal line across the low of that M top and you get another shot at the rink, uh, another shot at the Rinko. I mean, uh, retest, that's 15 and a half, all the way down to two. That's a 13 S&P point drop straight down. So it's a neat way how you can trade these M tops and W bottoms. If you took the retest here also, same thing. If I take a look at that, when the market finally breaks, it's the closing, where's the closing basis, right? The closing basis, when the market breaks, once it closes back inside, gets back outside of it, there's the M for continuation. So you can do it either way you want. I mean, this is a nice short that's going on with just a 13 Renko short. But I wanted to do this video to show you the difference in fills on a 13 Renko versus a 20 Renko is typically right at an eight tick difference. So if you're using the strategy, like I said, right there's our two fills. I'll go back to 20 Renko so you can see it. So we've got, we had three outer edge trades on three outer edge trades on the S&P the last two days. Two yesterday, two in the morning, or one in the morning yesterday, one in the afternoon. And we had one just come up here right now. 31 a quarter. She's as low as what? 23 and a quarter on the S&P. That's our retracement setup, deep outer edge slingshot. We will turn yellow for you. You will get the arrow. You will get the audible alert that goes on your computer. You're looking for a possible swing high or swing low in the market when that happens. The other setup we look for is a zone break. The zone break, that's when you get a momentum setup, when it's breaking through the zone. And we want to see those happen when we're breaking outside a high value area. So right now, you can see we're set up for one right now. We're set up, here's our outer edge trade on the software in the room. 
There's your outer edge trade. Here's the breakdown that's happening. That's going to be happening if it turns yellow breakdown. It's 23 and a half. Does that line up with market profile? Yes. If you look at market profile, my low value area is at 23 and a half, right on it. This is going to be a good pivot level to trade off of. If we get a breakdown through, we should see some momentum in the market. If you notice, I like to use market profile for targets. And if we're in a balanced or imbalanced market, you can see the market profile almost to the tick called the low here, bounced up. Got up here, wicks don't count. Wicks are for amateur traders. That's where they're getting stopped out. We look at the close of the candle. Wicks are for amateurs. That are Those are stop outs. They're taking buy stops out. The liquidity grabbing, that's where they take buy and sell stops out when you see the wick of the candle. You won't see a breakout in market profile until you see a whole body candle like this. It closes, and then we get a directional move. What that means is once I get a whole body candle close, that market should have a retest, and then it should continue. We want to look for, we want to look for the breakdowns to happen in here. Oops. The zone breakdowns that happen in here. That's where we want to happen. Because the market is imbalanced and it went right down to my support level on the previous day of market profiles. This is an imbalanced market. When you're in between high value and low value, this has happened for almost 40 years now. It's worked the same. If you get into an imbalanced market, then all these all these Stops right here are going to start getting hit. So you're going to see these sell stops just get hit, and you're going to see the market get vertical relatively quick down to the yesterday's profile or the previous day's profile two days back. That's what it likes to gravitate towards. The key is once you get outside a profile here, the market gets, there's no resistance until the previous day's profile is yesterday or the previous day. It actually hit the uh, previous day. That was the high of the session. But look at the look at the run you get when you break out a profile. So this is where you want to see. We've had a, we had a breakout there, a zone breakout. I sent you on your charts. We had a zone breakout here also, and the market just cranked up. You want to see these zone breakouts like this, right on top market profile. So we have that right now. It's right on top profile. Profiles here, the easiest way to look at it is the big green bar is our line is low value area. It's right at uh, 49.2350. Well, where's our breakdown? Right there's our breakdown. It'll turn yellow if we have two close below it. Ironically, it's right at 49.2350. That's going to be a good pivot level to trade off of for our breakdown. We already had our outer slingshot here at 31 and a half and the low of 23 and a quarter. Now we're looking for a breakdown of market profile because right now the market is inside a profile. Red is HVA, green is LVA, the blues of POC are the control point, the most volume is traded. We don't trade off of that for breaks. So right now we're in, in a balanced market. Once you get outside of the outer edge here of 23 and a half or 49.33, and this works on all markets like this, the market becomes imbalanced here. And then the market becomes imbalanced here. There's our yesterday's profile. And here's yesterday's profile. This is where it should go. They typically go from control point to control point. So if I look at the previous day's control points, the market likes to rotate to control to control pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a target, hard target for the day there. Traders ask how I get these targets. How are they so accurate when I call these out one, two, three hours before and they're 20 points away, 30 points away. What I'm looking at is the profile levels. This is a good target to the upside if we get through HVA by a closing candle basis. This good target if we get through LVA. 
Now, it can still crank through the control, but that's where they like to bring it. Your ultimate level is going to be the other side of profile. That would be an ultimate level short target today if we get below the low value area here. And the ultimate buy target would be a control point to scale, but it would be right up there at HVA also. So you can, you can tell where your targets are for the day. Just by looking at my profile, we don't use a 30-minute profile. It's too small. I like to look at these profiles on a couple-hour basis, and I like to look at them right now. Here's our current profile on a balanced market. I like to see where they're going, going from the previous day's profile to let me know where my targets are. So if I break out of 23.5 on a breakdown, zone breakdown short, our momentum breakdown, my first target is 23 quarters, but then I got it running all the way down to 12. So you want to try to hold your runners, some runners, all the way down to that 12 from the 23 level. So that's what we try to do. We try to use market profile in conjunction with my outer zone trades and my zone breakdowns. And that sums it up. If you keep it simple like that, you can stop trades all day long, and this is a major heads up in the market. This is not after the fact. We see these trades, the breakdown trades, 5 to 30 minute heads up. These retracement trades, you see them almost an hour ahead of time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes ahead of time. I mean, you get a big heads up. If I look on this trade this morning, on this outer edge trade, it started right here at 6.30 this morning. We did not have a short opportunity until 8.30. You had two hour heads up on an outer edge trade. So this trade short on the S&P at 31.5, potential down to 23.5, you had a huge heads up on it, right? Now you do get a lot more on the NASDAQ futures, obviously. Uh, at one point last week, we had 20 of these that came up on the NASDAQ futures, which is awesome. 20 of these guys. Depending where you want to place your stop, the stop should be placed outside of the outer zone. I mean the outer pull-in bar, and then adjust when it starts moving. That's your hard stop. So at 13 Rinko, your stop's going to be right at that high of that 13 Rinko, 13 ticks. 20 be outside this 20 and so on. That's your initial hard stop. Once it starts moving, then you can trail your stop down and so on. All right. So that's what we're looking at. Two outer edge trades. This is the retracement setup, deep outer edge setups. I do have the failure trades in there also. You can add the failure trades in. Failure trades are when you're going against zone, zone trend. Uh, those arrows will fire off when you are going against zone trend for a possible move up, up in the market. So we'll go over that also um, in the um, in the conference call this weekend. We'll run some replay on that also. The cool thing with the slingshot and the and the outer edge setup is they're both got audible alerts. I mean, the slingshot and the failure, they're both audible alerts. Um, it's, it's like a doorbell sound that goes off. So this morning, the doorbell sound went right off here on, would go off on your speakers right at that level for the, for the setup as far as that goes, on the outer edge trade as far as that goes right here. So what we're looking for right now, we are looking for, a breakdown of 23 and a half on the S&P that would break us down on the low value area here and that will get us down here uh, NASDAQ futures looking for a breakdown sell it doesn't have an outer edge trade yet and then on the crude oil pit hasn't opened yet getting close three minutes I'm looking for a possible breakout when it forms on the crude oil and then also an outer edge trade there S&P is active right now we got a possible 23 and a half breakdown coming up as we speak so we'll want to watch that as far as that goes, um, as far as uh, the next possible setup on the S&P.
okay but the outer edge trades are the same on any type of market the last one on crude oil was here I mean Nasdaq futures the same thing you, you an audible alert will come you see a yellow bar form around that bar and you have the same you have, you see a lot of these on the Nasdaq there's a ton of them 10 15 20 of them will come on the on the 20 Renko sometimes during the session S&P doesn't have a lot of them but when they do you can see it caught that high S&P is pretty accurate when they come up to it <clears throat> 